welcome back to Barnstable this morning. I'm Sarah Colvin, and joining me live in the studio, Town Manager Tom Lynch. Tom, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How did, are you? Did you have a nice Thanksgiving? Very or? nice Thanksgiving. I didn't have to travel too far. Lots of good food. All good. How about you? Black Friday? No, no, uh, I'm not down with the Black Friday shopping. <laughs> <laughs> me either. So it's just, but no, it was a nice weekend. Very nice weekend. So. Indeed. Um, so a lot of stuff to talk about. Again, uh, congratulations are in order uh, from the Government Finance Officers Association yet again uh, receiving the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award. Well, you know, it, 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 it's always nice to be recognized by really the, the, the preeminent um, uh, government agency or, or actually nonprofit agency that recognizes um, budgeting and, and, um, and awards work of this, of this nature. And I thought that, you know, I just mentioned about to um, uh, our constituents that the, um, the the project today the when you get the award it's not just the recognition for you put together a nice piece they're really looking at you know is it uh, was it a policy document you know how did it um, uh, what was the financial plan that you would put together was it a an operational guide for folks and was it a communication device and a finance director uh, this year had revamped the, uh, our budget and when we looked at it because we wanted it to be more readable and try to be that <coughs> communi communication device that we're talking about. So it, it encompasses more than just, you know, you're doing a good job. It really kind of reinforces that you've built structurally a good budget and that it's being recognized by a national group. So my hats go off to <coughs> Mark Milne, the finance director, and his team. and. Well, I get recognized and he gets recognized for the work. We know it's a whole team effort that takes a lot of um, you know, effort to put into to get that document together. And we use it all year long. I mean, people will come in, we'll talk about things, we'll take the budget out to show them various aspects that's in there. So it's a very important document that uh, we put together. Naturally, the budget is the most important ordinance we do each year. But the document itself is important because it gives a record of where we're spending and what our priorities are for the coming year and future priorities as well. Absolutely, so, yeah. and I believe we're uh, rated this time around as outstanding as a communications yes. device, and certainly, you know, it really does. It, it gives a good snapshot of the town. I mean, it's hard to call a, you know, 600-page document yes. a snapshot. <laughs> it certainly isn't. Um, but it, it really does, for people wanting to know a little bit more, you can dig deep into that document and, and learn a little bit more about what goes on here in town. One of the other documents we put together, um, and you'll see uh, this item also, repeating itself on the agenda is um, we looked, we've looked. we been looking at the condition of the buildings and the site <coughs> over at the Austral Bay School. And we had two documents that were uh, funded and put together um, that, you know, by our uh, consulting firm, uh, VHB. And, you know, they're, they're fairly thick, they're fairly lengthy, they're talking yep. about the condition of all of the, the, uh, the the buildings out there, the Austro Bay School and, and um, the Austro Recreation Building. Based on this documentation, the Austro Village Association uh, took a vote where they feel that, you know, it, it might be time for the Bay School and for the Rec Building to come down. Mm. So the work we have been done, and we have done up until this point of looking at the site, including those buildings, um, we're now going to be putting an extra uh, $10,000 <laughs> on the um, budget for, or rather in, uh, on the agenda for consideration by the councillors to expand that study a little bit and if the buildings were to be taken down, and that's still a, uh, you know, an, an issue that's out there, that's something that needs to be discussed uh, and vetted quite fully with the, with the village and with the town and with the with naturally with all the councillors. But as we go through that process, we need to say, how would, how would that additional space be used? Those, um, uh, you know, the buildings have had an important role in the community in the past. If we were to put some sort of community center or some other building there, how would it look? Where would you put it on the building? So we're going to expand the VHB contract to not only look at the work they've already done, but to say if it were a clean slate out there, what would it look like then? We know what the suggestions have been from the village in terms of uh, a playground and ball fields and a walking track and things of that nature that were put on um, the existing uh, open space. But if this other space became open and if you were going to look at parking in another building uh, in, in the not too distant future, how would that sit and what would that new acre, how would you uh, encompass that new acre plus of land into this um, 
proposition. So that's something that is just an ongoing issue. Um, it's something that the Oslo Village Association has talked about taking on to go and talk to their other village groups about. Um, because I'm, like many of us, a preservationist. I like, yes. I, it, it's very difficult uh, to take down uh, a building that has been in a, in, 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 in a you know, community for so long. Uh, you've got to look at the pros and cons of that, and that's what the study did, and that's what will be a topic of discussion over um, the next few months. Indeed, really look at, at the structure of the building and is it worth saving. I have to say that I was in the town of Chatham over the weekend, and they have the, their old elementary school that they turned into a community center several years ago. It was the first time I'd actually ever been in the building. Yes. Absolutely gorgeous. They did Terrific. a really yeah. nice job. Uh, but again, so you have to look at what you have, what the integrity of it, and how it's going to be used in the future. But exactly. it's always so interesting to all see. All those questions need, you know, need to be vetted, and uh, the additional money will help us do that. Indeed. So, so this Friday uh, coming up is the Years of Service Ceremony. This is always a really nice uh, look at the people who work here in the town of Barnesville. You know, first of all, it's an opportunity to say thank you um, uh, for those. And, and we look at, at you know, service in five-year increments. So we'll stop by looking at folks who joined us five years ago, and this year we'll go all the way up to individuals who have served in the town for 40 years. We have two members of the police department, um, Deputy Chief Craig Tamish and Resource Officer, a long time for over at the high school, uh, Reed Hall. They are both served 40 years. Uh, we have Peter Doyle, who's over at the Water Pollution Control, the director, he's been there for uh, 35 years. And then uh, Charlie Lewis, who's been our, uh, you know, animal control officer and, and running that department for uh, 30 years. So, and then we have people all the way down from 25 down down to five, and we don't get a lot of opportunities in, <clears throat> you know, Bonsville to pull a large group of people together. Mm -hmm. So each year we do get, you know, at least you know those that have, are in those five-year increments together so that we can say thank you and recognize them and it's always been well received in the past and we're looking forward to it again this Friday. Absolutely. So. And uh, something that we may not be looking forward to mm -hmm. is having to deal with snow and ice on our roadways. Now I have to say with today's warm temperatures I'm not really concerned about snow <laughs> but you know you never know. We are we are in December after all. Well we saw what could happen just before the holidays with snow just yes. off just off Cape. So each year uh, we appropriate probably upwards of six hundred thousand uh, dollars into uh, the budget so that we can begin you know spending that uh, that money when and if we need to be called out for snow and ice and last year we were uh, as I'm sure Dan Santos our director of public works has mentioned in the past so well over 30 call outs and um, we spent a substantial amount of money it's the one account in the budget <clears throat> that we're allowed to do deficit spending on so we naturally for public safety reasons, need to get the roads cleared, and if the money isn't appropriated, um, so we try to take a guess of what we might hit, and then you know, it, but we can spend addition to that, in, uh, additionally into that, but that's the first thing that comes off of the budget when you start planning for the next fiscal year, because you have to meet that uh, financial obligation. So that'll be one of the items that'll <clears throat> be up there on the agenda. But as you say, it's not something we want to look forward to. Uh, and on a degree, on a day like today where it's going to be 50, we'd, uh, we would like to think that it's not going to happen. But exactly. We, we know it's out there. We, so. we do indeed, and we know it's good to plan for that. Well, Tom, I thank you so much, as always, for coming down and giving us uh, the, the latest. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Tom Lynch, of course, town manager here in the town of Barnes.